you are watching a master at work. So there's no messing around with this one. Let's get it straight out of the box, set up, calibrated and printing because, of course, the hype is real despite the leaks all over Reddit. So in December last year, we were told to expect something in Q1 of 2025. And right at the end of March, the H2D has arrived. Inside this very box, and it's one of the few review machines issued worldwide, this printer promises mind-blowing specs, but also raises a few eyebrows around additional functionality like laser engraving, plotting, cutting and drawing. However, for this video, I'm going to mainly concentrate on the 3D printing side as Bamboo has packed in some serious upgrades. It has a larger build volume of 350 by 320 by 325, a heated chamber that heats all the way up to 65 degrees, and we've got 350 degrees on the high flow hot end. And this is an all-in-one fabrication system, and it doesn't just stop at 3D printing. As I mentioned before, there's laser engravers, digital cuts, and plots. We've seen this approach, of course, before from Snapmaker and Creality, whose laser modules felt like strapping a jet engine to a bicycle. But Bamboo Lab might actually have figured out how to do it properly. Bamboo Lab arguably revolutionized multicolor 3D printing with their AMS system, turning dull monochrome models into beautiful, overcomplicated filament sucking masterpieces. Now they seem to be stepping outside of the 3D printing comfort zone, but will this be another win or a midlife crisis in a machine form? Let me know what you think about that in the comments. More about that later. Now the 350 degree hot end allows printing with high temperature materials and the dual nozzle engagement system is designed to improve efficiency by reducing purging, minimizing filament waste, material waste, making printing more resource efficient and print time by optimizing production speed. This is the one that gets everyone excited, the camera monitoring system. So Big Brother is watching you, but Babu has integrated multiple onboard cameras for print monitoring. Now there is a standard monitoring camera, which you would have seen on the X1 Carbon and the P1Ss, which allows real-time observation of the printing process, which again, we're all very much used to. But there are two additional cameras. One will be on the hot end. And again, the other one will be with a laser module, offers a bird's eye view, but is also used for precision tracking. So what about the flow rates and thermal capacities? Well, it's 40 millimeters squared per second on the ABS flow rate, enabling high-speed printing. It's 60 millimeters squared on the high flow version. So there's two different types of nozzles that you can install into this, which is enhancing material throughput. Now there's also a smart airflow system of course we're going to need that for the laser module but it manages heat cooling and filtration for optimal performance as i said before there are two machine versions there's the h2d and there's the h2d laser edition the h2d is a standard 3d printer with an upgrade path for additional functionality and the h2d is also a 3d printer but it also has the laser module and the laser includes all that engraving capabilities that you're going to be expecting from this new piece of equipment so from what I can see inside of the media kit is that there is a diode laser, which I believe is about 10 watts, but there's a 40 watt laser coming later on down the line. On the AMS side, we do have the new AMS system, the version 2 Pro. It's an updated AMS system that introduces four color support, retaining the multi-material capacity that we're already used to, but it also adds active filament drying up to 65 degrees, obviously to help maintain your filament quality. There's a high torque servo feeding motor that's going to be improving your material handling and ceramic filament inlets, which I guess is just going to enhance the filament guidance. The H2D though remains compatible with older AMS units. So if you've got ones from the X1 Carbon or the P1S or the P1P, well, they're going to work with this as well. So it's going to allow you for expansion based on those existing setups. And that's most likely going to be important because this is going to be capable of printing up to 24 colors by combining the AMS and the AMS2 units. The caveat there though, of course, is that you can have 16 on your normal kind of AMS stroke AMS2, but in order to up that capacity by another eight, you're going to use the AMS HT high temperature filament dryer. And buying eight of those might not be as cost effective as you might think, but the price of course remains to be seen. So the AMS HT high temperature filament dryer, well, it's in the name, isn't it? It's for high temperature filaments. The AMS HT offers active drying up to 85 degrees to maintain material integrity. Well, that's the specs. And now the machine is now out of the box. So let's calibrate it and get this thing printing. So following on from that calibration process, which took around 20 minutes to complete, I started printing the stock models. The first one, of course, was the basic Benchy in Polymaker Teal. I did, however, notice that the machine did reset a couple of times during the startup process, but I put that down to setup. However, following on from that print, the machine switched off and wouldn't switch back on. So on further diagnostics, it seems that the power leads fuse had blown when starting the next print. So of course I changed the cable, which was an easy fix, and the machine came back to life. 
On power up though, well, we had some other issues, a possible AC board problem and the LED strip on the bed was flashing red. So of course I had no choice. It was time to whip the back off and well, get the multimeter out. So after some internal cable checks, it appears that at the rear of the machine, there is also a quick blow fuse that is attached to the AC unit. When the main power cable tripped for whatever reason, it could have well have wiped out that at the same time. So a quick replacement of that and a new lead to the machine, well, saw it coming back to life again. And I casually say that like it was a two minute job. In fact, it was, well, several hours. This video today is proudly sponsored by PCBWay, your go-to high-quality PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, and CNC machining company. Whether you're creating your next big project or experimenting with cutting-edge materials, PCBWay has the tools and expertise to make it happen. Check out PCBWay.com today and bring your ideas to life with precision and passion. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel and creators just like you. So we ventured forward onto the next file where it happened to be a panda. Check this out. So a couple of observations straight away now. Now the machine is working okay. We've got past the initial fuse issue and Bamboo Lab have been pretty responsive in regards to coming back to me and asking a bunch of different questions and trying to work out what went wrong there. They have seen some AC issues apparently in the past, but this is quite an abnormality for them. Now then, the first thing I'd say is that the very first print that I did, mm, it was okay. It wasn't the worst benchy that I've ever seen, but it also wasn't the best one either. Not wanting to be hypercritical, but there are some lumps and bumps on the print. And again, on the hull as well, there does seem to be a few holes. So what we do is we'll dry the filament and see if we get a better benchy. The next thing I guess is the machine wobble. The printer itself does tend to have a lot of movement due to the rubber feet being quite spongy. I would guess that of course this is a design preference due to the rapid movement overall. But it did leave my 3D printed chicks on their backs. The good news is though that that filament's dry and that benchy's just been printed. Let's have a look at it. Ah, and there was one more thing about that filament dryer. And that is in order to get the dryer working, well, you do have to plug it into your mains. So not a big deal, of course, but unfortunately the cable that comes with that particular unit, in my opinion, is far too short. I digress, let's have a look at this benchy. So the bench on the left is the original one and the one on the right is with the dried filament. And there is a small, very, very small amount of difference. But to be honest with you, I don't, still don't think it's the best benchy that I've ever seen. And to be quite frank with you, I would say that the Panda print was much better. Um, again, there isn't huge amounts of detail in there. And this is a 20 minute benchy. So it's not a crazy, crazy quick one. But I have seen, certainly out of the P1P and the P1S, better quality, I would say, overall. I'd say that the Panda probably looks a little bit better. There's no sort of flushing into the uh, the white, so it's it's done a great job on that, of course. That looks pretty cool. And the little chick as well. Again, there's no flushing that's gone into the yellow, which, again, we've seen several times before. And, again, that's because of the way that... Uh, it's set up with that dual nozzle. So it actually is going to reduce some of the issues with purging or flushing and also mixing into the print. So I think that looks pretty cool. 
So I just wanted to show you a few more things, but also I wanted to be really clear and open and transparent. The machine here was sent to me free of charge. They haven't sponsored this video. Of course, it's been sponsored by PCBWay.com. They allow me to pay editors and other people that are basically integral into me making content, of course, and also polymaker.com. So again, thank you to those guys, but check this out. So there are a couple of things that I want to show you on the back of the printer. We're going to start the AMS2. We've got your PTFE tube. You've got your data connections here. One of these goes to the HT unit. And we also have a little power brick here that you could plug in at some point. On the HT2, of course, it's more of the same. You can daisy chain this. And this is where your little figure of eight cable would plug in if you want to make sure that that's going to heat up and dry your filament. Lower down here, of course, your PTFE tubes go in for your left and your right. Your printer connection cable, basically for your AMS, just plugs into here. Now we have a specific TPU filament inlet here. Now I've not used this as yet, but I'm going to assume that this is going to be a direct path for lighter materials or certainly spongier materials like TPU, for example, that can't go in the AMS system. We'll be custom to this. This is the poop shoe looking beautiful, of course. Just up at the back here, we've got another two data connections. I'm not entirely sure what they're for, but I guess we'll find out in due course. Might be for the laser, for example. I don't know. So right at the back here is pretty interesting. Obviously, you've got your on and off switch. We've got the fuse that runs the AC unit, which is the one that popped earlier. But this little thing here is a key and you can remove this and that will basically deactivate the printer altogether. So if you remove this, the printer will not function. So you have to have that plugged in in order for it to work. There you go. Saw that little light come on. Now you can hear the printer powering back up again. And just to point out here, this is basically where this opens up and all your airflow just comes through here. So here's a little side profile of the machine. You can have a nice little look in there. Of course, on the laser edition, these will be green for um, protection for your eyes and stuff like that. So a couple of extra things in here. On the left-hand side, we have the cooling fan, obviously the extruder part up here. As this moves over, of course, there are some little widgets here that basically activate the cutter. And that's on the left and the right-hand side. At the very top there, you can see where the inlet comes in for your PTFE to feed your extruder here. Again, on the right and left hand side, we do have these cutters. Um, basically, your hot end basically just wax up against this. But these do move in and out as well, um, which is uh, pretty interesting. Again, the idler pulleys are larger than I've seen before. And of course, the belts are much larger as well. On the inside, we've got another data connection here. And at this point, again, I don't know what that's for. We've got your wiper. We've got a dragger. Um, these obviously move up and down as you've seen in the video as well, which is pretty awesome. So on the very front of the printer, they have this LED strip going across here. Again, that will change color depending on which mode you're in. Last night, of course, we had it in red mode because there was a problem with the printer, but usually it will be green or it'll be yellow, or if it's heating, it'll do a bunch of different colors as well. So the top left and the top right hand corner, we do have some fairly decent LED strip lights. And it does give you a really good view of the printing platform. The main viewing camera in this case is just up here on the left hand side. So that's the ins and outs of the H2D. I hope you enjoyed the video. There was one thing that I was in two minds about maybe mentioning, and that was the leaks that happened on Reddit, which were apparently pulled from Bamboo Labs website and other various places. One thing that really concerns me about that particular fact is, well, how secure is Bamboo Lab? Because certainly if it was my company, I'd be absolutely raging that key information had been leaked out to the general public, which then spurs into a different method altogether of, well, actually, how secure is our data if their data is not all that secure? So really interested to see what you guys think about that. So that might be about that. Again, this hasn't been a review video. This is just a first look. Interesting to see some of the elements that they've included inside of this. Now, the review video very much starts filming now. There's more prints, larger prints different types of filaments and stuff as well. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more of that good stuff. There is also a video that I've made on the slicer settings, so make sure you check that out. But let me know what you think in the comments of what the H2D is all about. Is it for you or are you going to give it a hard pass? Until next time, guys. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.